So, scenario was firefighter down, oxygen tank is they're losing oxygen in the tank. Two groups. The group inside, I heard, because I'm watching this group because I'm right in front of them. The group inside, I could just hear and, and I start paying attention. And the captain, I hear the captain saying, he's looking at one kid, he's like, he was like, where are you? Where are you? Tell me where you're at. And I couldn't really hear Buddy because he had his mask on, but I saw this. I saw this, like this. And I saw him going like this. You know what that means. Y'all got body language. You know what that means. You know what that means. So I saw this, and, I'm, and he's doing this. And I'm like, man, I'm just looking like, fuck, man. He's like, he was like, tell me where you're at. Tell me where you're at. And I heard him mumbling. He was like, all right, what are you doing? He was like, no, that's not what you're doing. Hurry up, he's dying, he's dying. And I'm like, yo, this is, this nah, is intense. intense. But think about it, think about it. That's some real shit. That is real. That's some real shit, bro. If you can't, if you can't act, if you can't handle yourself, literally in the fire, you crawling through, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit gave me chills because, you know football, you gotta put yourself in stressful situations in practice, mm -hmm. so in games it'd be a little bit easier because you at least done it before. Yeah. Same thing with that, and it's like you can tell, bro. He was hyperventilating. Mm -hmm. like he was he like a he had like a panic attack, bro. He couldn't he couldn't think. You you I don't know if y'all been there before, like playing, yeah. and you feel like you can't do nothing right, and you just like, God damn, I'm so tired. I can't do anything. I can't process information, and I feel like I've been there before. You know what I'm saying? Just like, in a different oh yeah, it's not life threatening. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. They, it was like real like. Like a real fire? No, it no, was no. It was at the, it was at the, 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 the They're practicing. Yeah, it was at the station, but the scenario was, you know, you did the scenario have like some real shit in it though? I mean, they had real equipment on. They had real tanks. Real. They had to disconnect the tank, connect the tank, put it back on, turn it on, and it was like a, a whole process that they had to do. But he couldn't even get his words out. Mm -hmm. He couldn't start, and then the captain, the chief, or whatever he is, you know, him making it a more stressful environment by saying, where are you right now? Hurry up, get the call out, he's dying. And I was just like, ooh. But just imagine though, how, how, the, how, the, how the captain supposed to be, be acting though. I mean, but in that type of situation. Bro, you, bro, you're running into a fire. It's not gonna be, hey, we're running into a you're fire. You're not going to hear no. It's captain. not gonna be do to do. Nah, yeah, the captain do, is supposed do, to, do, 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 the captain probably come like that because one, he want to keep himself safe. Yeah. His firefighters safe. 100%. Safe. Everybody's safe, like, because all of that shit comes back on him. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But it was just, like, I, I saw Brandon, I walked away like, I know Brandon's probably the most equipped to handle this, yeah. given the sport, the football background. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, not compared to actually literally running a fire, but I say that, like, you got to, embrace the fire like run into the fucking fire like yeah. i mean this is not a real life scenario but yeah. that's what i'm saying this was like practice for him and i'm like Whew. like i was like i can do that i said but man that's you could tell that's rough because you gotta because you gotta say where you're at say what you're doing say who's down right which is standard it's like getting that play out right standard stuff and they gotta be in a timely manner yeah, bro, you have to be. You gotta be. And, and they kept on saying, connect the oxygen. He trying to, man, big old Mickey Mouse gloves on, equipment on, the tank, 100 pounds of equipment on. And they're on their knees. And you know what I'm saying? He trying to connect their shit. They got to flip the dude over. And I was just like, man. Just watching yeah. Crazy. yeah, it's like probably watching like, you know, compared to football, like, like, like one on ones inside, D tackle, mm. O lineman, yeah. and somebody, he just getting his ass kicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just getting his ass kicked. You sitting there like, ooh, man, you got a long day in front of you, bro. That's how I kind of felt for Buddy like that. You know what I'm saying? He got a long day. Like that type day. of atmosphere, you got you to be like mixed. And yeah. they're going to they gonna really test him now. Yeah. yeah he, but he has to be, because, bro, you can't, bro, you, you let somebody die. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you let somebody die. What's up, everybody? We back with another episode of the Hub City Podcast. Um, today is a pretty special one. We have somebody that's not just an NFL player, a Super Bowl champ. We have somebody that's from our home, from our town, you know. And the purpose of this episode is for anybody who's watching just to know that you can, your dreams could come to reality. It don't matter where you're from, what school you go to, whatever your circumstances are at home, like, you can make it, you know. 
we, it's an honor to have him on. I've been, we've been trying to get him on for a while. He's a busy man, you know. <laughs> but without further ado, we got Mr. Jonathan Casillas, you know. G. Uh, that, that's that's for short. J for short. How you, my man? I'm good, bro. I appreciate y'all having me, man. What's up, baby? What's going on, my dude? You sure? You know, uh, it's been a, we've been trying to get you on for a while, you know. All right, try, man, to, try to try to you know get some insight. I'll be on in you. Brunswick, bro. Right, I've been in Brunswick <laughs> like four times in like two weeks. You have, but we got to figure it out. We had to. You know, got it, dummy. You know, now we here. Right now. Let's, let's, right let's talk, man. But how's everything though? Like, how's uh, life after football and all that stuff, man? It's good, man. Just you know, uh, I'm 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 so glad that I get to do things that I want to do. You know, because we love we all love football. Yeah, you know, yeah. even B, right? I watched him play, I watch all y'all play ball. We love the game, I love the game, you know, but for me, because I played it for so long, I feel like it, it limited me in the things that I could do because I had to be so focused and so determined yeah. that I didn't tap into a lot of things that mm -hmm. I feel like I'm tapping into right now. Like, I'm a creative person, bro. I've been drawing since I was like a little kid. Mm -hmm. I haven't drawn since I played in a professional, you know, professional level. But now I'm back to creating stuff, I'm back to, you know, kind of, you know, being that, yeah, right, exactly, in the shirt. Oh, that's your brand right yeah. there? Yeah, right. uh, a little jersey, always, jersey in the building. You know, Say guard is coming soon, though, coming soon. I just, you know, this beta testing right now. Uh, but I make it in the house, though. Okay. I'll be doing it at the crib. I got a screen press. I got a vinyl cutter. Oh, wow. uh, you know, I got the cricket cutter and stuff. So, you know, and for me, it's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad. My daughter's 11 years old. When I was playing ball, thought I was a good dad, mm -hmm. but I wasn't the dad that I, I am today. Yeah. You know, the thoughtful, the guy that's, you know, taking the extra steps, spending the, the, the time with, with my kid. Um, you know, and I feel like I'm a lot more well-rounded now. Mm -hmm. You know, and football was only a part of who I am and what I've done. And because you have to be so focused on the sport that I feel like it limited me on. From all the other stuff you wanted to do. Exactly, like, yeah. Because, like, that's kind of something that's, common right now for some, for some athletes. Like some athletes won't be able to, to do what they want to do until after their playing career. Like one person I could say that stood out for me or whatever that kind of like showing that all right, you could be an athlete but you could still do the things you want to do and have fun was like when LeBron. I, like, like LeBron but like I was going to say like Shaq because when I used to watch, I was watching like a little bit of like his, his documentaries or whatever, or whatever stuff he's on. That's one thing you always said. I'm not just a basketball player. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a human being. Like Shaq was doing DJing, making music, yeah. commercials, TV shows, all of that. So like, sometimes the coaches may not want you to do that, or your organization may not want you to do that because they feel like you may get distracted and all of that stuff from what the main goal is. And I guess that's just being an athlete. But that's not just like who you are, though. Yeah. Like, oh, I, like, well, I, I like that you brought up Shaq and. You know, what I learned from Shaq too, not only just having your hands in multiple different things, but building a team. Yeah. Because yeah, Shaq, he always said, I got my people doing yeah, this. He said, I got my people doing this. Even when he owned all of these businesses, he just do partnerships. Right. He can't literally just do it sit all. There and be run the whole business. business. Yeah. Right. You know, so that's what I've definitely learned from him. And you know, I don't really like people like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Especially stepping away from football, you know, because, and, Y'all know this because you know you play you played it at you know at a you played at a high level in high school. You got hurt, you know. BS happened. If you end up making it to the NFL, yeah. you're tested, you're prodded. I don't care what anybody say. Everybody that's in the NFL deserves to be there because yeah. yeah. they went through years and years yeah. of testing. Years of right. Whether they are good NFL players or not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about deserve the right to be there. Yeah. Right. Stepped away from football, I retired, getting into cannabis, doing a whole bunch of different entrepreneurial business things. I'm meeting guys that are professionals that give me their business card and their, their website is nice and lit. And they, they start doing their job or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, I can do that shit better than you. Yeah, you can do it yourself. And I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You, I'm starting to see like outside of the professional uh, sport that I played for nine years, it's a lot of bullshit out there. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that's fluffing and they ain't really about nothing, but they look good on paper. Yeah. They look good. The Instagram page lit. Absolutely. The, the website look lit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they got references, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you get them, but like, bro, who you make money doing what you do? Yep, yeah, yeah. Cause you're terrible. Yeah. You know, so for, for me, as I stepped outside, I'm like, all right, not only uh first of all, I'm very capable to do things, but not only do I want to do multiple things. But most importantly, I need to establish that team. So I've been building and networking and kind of like trying to see who is my 
established network so we can get some stuff done. Yeah, you know like I mean? having a team is very a team important. Anything is is very important. important. Yeah, like even like for us, for our podcast, or whatever. It's literally just me, my brother, and B. Yeah, like how we wanted to do it. We wanted to keep it homegrown. Like I don't want to go out my way to go find somebody to record and edit our videos when I could just go get B. You know, that's my boy. Like he was a he was a freshman. I was a senior. Like he was under us. You know what I'm saying? So like. That's like having a team is very important. Obviously, though, you gotta trust within your team and within yeah, yeah. your camp. You know, like stuff like that. But because there's always some people you can't trust. Yeah, that's a fact. But I'm mad y'all called my boy a cameraman. He's like, oh, the cameraman. Like I don't know. But because I, I forgot, I forgot. Because I forgot. Come on, man. Because I forgot. Cause I forgot. Cause I forgot. My bad, B. I would never refer to you as nah, a cameraman. Most of people don't be knowing me. I'm be like, all right, we got B on the on. My but I know my guy. I watched him. You know what I'm saying? I watched him. Came to my camp plenty of times. You right. You right. Yeah, man, my guy. Talk about your camp and the meaning of forward progress. Like, what does that mean? Uh, so uh, we're going into my eighth uh, installment this year, the oh, Jonathan the Casillas, year? Okay. the Jonathan Casillas Forward Progress Camp. We would have been at year ten, but COVID. But COVID. we had to take two years off because of COVID. Um, but yes, yeah, the Jonathan Casillas Forward Progress Camp is at the New Brunswick Middle School on June tenth. We're going to our eighth installment, mm -hmm. and you see, it doesn't say football camp, no, because no, it's no. not a football camp. We do football in the afternoon, mm -hmm. but y'all y'all been through it. You've been, been sitting in the classroom. classroom. We in the I classroom. used to be the time. I used to want to tap out. I'm like, <laughs> oh, only reason why I used to want to like, cause like, it would be crazy, bro. Cause we used to have that camp. We used to have that. We used to have the job. We used to have early camp in the morning. Early too. in the morning. Saturday, y'all know. You're and then we just have football practice that Friday or whatever, or workouts or something. So like, you working, waking up on that Saturday, tired. But like, yeah. I, but like when you when you a kid back then, you probably don't realize how important mm -hmm. that yeah. stuff is. Cause and it changed for me. Cause now, like when I was talking last year, I know them kids were saying the same thing I was saying. But I like. I see the other side yeah, of it. I'm like, yeah. But that, but like, you it's know, not that bad. The, the reason why I, I started the camp because I use my platform in the NFL, playing in the league as, as, as long as I have, to provide hope, inspiration, and motivation to y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So y'all can look at me and be like, bro, that, I could, I could definitely do what he's doing. Yeah. Because you could. Yeah. You could. And I, it, it's not easy. You know, life ain't easy. Life is hard. But when you see somebody that, that did it, and you can actually touch them, you can talk to them, and you can actually have an idea of yeah. what was the process like, you know? That's my whole thought process. It's all about progression every day. That's why I got the name Forward Progress. Okay. Because you got to take a step every day to get towards your goal. You know, we talk about goals, turning dreams into goals. Take your dream, write it down, that's step number one. Now you have a purpose to wake up to every single day. Mm -hmm. That's a, a consistent message that I deliver to the kids because a lot of these kids dream and I'm going to be this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to drive that car. I'm going to have that chain. You know, when I get older, I say, okay, so what you doing now to get it? You know, you have to start. Yep. You know, like a lot of these, these kids, they don't have a purpose. They do. They just don't know what it is quite yet. Mm -hmm. You know, but you got to do the work. You know, you got to take it a, a, upon yourself to write it down, write down at least your goal. So at least mentally you can start, but you need a goal, you need a plan, and you need procedure. Uh, touching off of what you just said, uh, writing down your goals, or kind of like no, or finding yourself. When did you realize, all right, this right, me playing football right here can like you buy my mom. I was a basketball player first. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy because well, I graduated from I graduated from this uh, elementary school in the fourth grade in Jersey City in the yearbook. I don't know what made me say it because I wasn't even playing football quite yet. But if you look at the yearbook, it says I wanted to be a scientist or an NFL player, which is wild, crazy because just I never came up with it. I never played football, but I think I looked at the football players like, "Hey, man, like I want to do that." Yeah, you know, yeah. but my mom just didn't let me play. It was no like I don't even know. You never played pop Warner no, and all that stuff. I didn't play till I was so you in, got to high school, right? in high school. But the thing is, though, like when I was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I was at Feaster Park. Bro, I'll be, I'll be at the park, but right before the lights cut on, bro, I'm at the park in the rain by myself, no matter what, you know, dribbling, dribbling. And I'm, I had dreams of playing in college basketball, mm -hmm. uh, UConn, Georgetown. And, oh, and, and school the there. scenario was UConn's down by two. You can see it's inbounds the ball. I'm coast to coast with it. Throwing it off the gate or the pole at this park. <laughs> Boom, I catch it, you go down, down he guy. shoots. He misses. Got to run it back. Got to do it again. So I'm doing that, bro. Yeah, I had right. visions of me winning championships when I was young. I always was working. I always had a ball in my hands. This was before I lifted weights. I was just all about ball. I was watching and one mixtapes all the time. But I, I understood because I saw the work that I was putting in that it had a direct uh, impact on my game. Mm -hmm. And I was 
pretty good in basketball when I was young. So I took that work ethic, that mindset of you practicing it pays dividends in games. Yeah. I just took that to football. You know, my first year I played football my freshman year, I wasn't even good. Well, I got ran over by a basketball player yeah, for a year. touchdown. You know what I'm saying? My freshman year was bad. And we lost he was on varsity as a freshman? That. No. Oh, you played freshman? No, I played freshman. Mind you, y'all talked about the athletes earlier. Mm -hmm. We had some dogs at New Brunswick High School. We was we definitely going to touch yeah, on that. Yeah, right, right, right. So, so my freshman year, um, you know, and we didn't have the coach that we liked either. Uh, coach Quinn came uh, sophomore year. But that freshman year was a, was a big eye-opener for me, like, I need to put some work in in this sport because I really haven't worked at football at that point in my life. You probably just played because all your friends was playing. That's it, because Dre, Andre Dixon was playing. Andre, he wanted me to play. my best friend. You know, Dre was nice. Dre been playing since he was six years old. Yeah. You know, and, and I ended up playing. I was decent. Probably called me a little sorry. But then that off season, that off season, me and Dre hit the weights hard with big spells in them. Mm. And, um, man, we put on a little bit of weight. First uh, game as a sophomore, played JV. Dre rushed for like four touchdowns. I had like five sacks. It was like, all right, no more JV. <laughs> but now I'm on varsity now. I think one or two games in, uh, one of our starters, he breaks his arm, played mm -hmm. outside linebacker. I start my first game against South River, who beat the brakes off us the year before mm -hmm. when, when I was a freshman. Uh, we beat him 60 to zero at home. And I had, three, I had three sacks. And I was like 15. And I was. That was the start of the, the legacy the right legacy, there. That's what started yeah, it right that there. Was that it. But, game. But, right, that was it. And then, but you asked me about, about going to the league. I, I had, like, I, I didn't think I could do it, yeah, but I, I did, wanted to. Yeah. Like, that was something that was in my mind. Like, like I want to get I want to get to the NFL. But it wasn't until probably my sophomore year. So four years later, same type of situation. Uh, in college at Wisconsin, my first year. Uh, I'm decent. I played a lot of special teams. Blocked a couple of punts my freshman year. Didn't really play defense like at all. We had two senior linebackers. Mm. My next year, I was a starter from the beginning. My first game, we played against Bowling Green. I had 12 tackles, a, a sack, uh, four tackles for loss, a block punt, and a touchdown. Oh, in my first game ever. He was balling. Yeah, as, a, as a sophomore in, in college, special teams player of the week. And that game was like, hey, man, I might be able to make it to the league, uh -huh. bro. Because I'm 19 yeah. doing stuff like this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So You do it. You did everything on the defensive it, it, side. In one game, though, bro. In one game, bro. One game. One game. One game. Get this you know, so I had a good sophomore year, a good junior year, a good senior year, a decent senior year. It was her. Went undrafted, but, you know, ended up playing nine years. So. And then two right. Super Bowl. You want yeah. to listen, bro. Even, even though you didn't get drafted or whatever the case may be, a lot of players in the NFL are not privileged to play nine years. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You get what I'm saying? How long oh, did yeah, it take to become tenured? Uh, four, three and a half games. Okay. Yeah, four years. So, yeah, I'm definitely tenured. Now, you definitely yeah. said, though, about your high school legacy and all of that. Talk about that. Because a lot of people may just think New Brunswick is, oh, a, a ghetto town. There's nothing there. Nobody ever came through there. But it's like, there's some big names that didn't came through yeah. there. Yeah. So, for, in two years, we had eight Division One players. <laughs> and and uh, it will be... 2004 graduating class and my class 2005. Mm. Um, in 2004, we had the best, best player in the state of New Jersey, Dwayne Jarrett. Um, that was the year we won a state championship in football and basketball. We went undefeated. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, went, we won a state yeah, championship. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, Sorry. But people was always thinking like, oh, it's because of Dwayne. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And one person came we had four game. Division One games that year. Four, four Division One. Four Play Division One players, uh, uh, Dwayne's senior year, which was it was Dwayne, Desmond, Coach Putt. Well, I'm, I'm missing somebody. Who's the other guy? I don't know. What's Next the, year we had another four, which me and Dre. Who was Dwayne and Al? Al, Al, Al was my year. Okay. Um. Yeah, but the following year, which is my senior year, we again we start we start the season undefeated, and uh, we end up losing in the rain to Carteret in the semifinals. We should have beat them. Oh, we should have won two. We should have won. It was the rain. It was the rain. It was the rain. Oh, man. But, yeah, so we definitely had a lot of uh, talent around that time, 04, 05. And then it was like two years, and then Brandon Smith came out. He was All-American. And he was All-American. Up there with Dwayne Jarrett Damn. in terms of, you know, that All-American status. Mm -hmm. Four years between our All-Americans. But. You know, I went on to play college ball. I went on to play Akron. Trey played at UConn. Uh, we had Sean Simmons. He played for Louisiana Lafayette. 
So we have four Division One guys, eight Division One guys in two years, and one state championship. You got one for basketball too, so would that be two though? Yeah, but I'm talking football. I'm just talking football. Oh, right, right, right. But yeah, man. So like, look, a lot of these. I talk to these kids. A lot of these kids, they only know I play football because they heard it. They ain't never seen yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all yeah. actually watch yeah, the game. Watch the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be on and Madden. Be, like, right. Playing real Madden too, right? Right. Playing in this game. You know, so for me, part of my legacy um, is me showing up, mm -hmm. me being there. You know, when I walk into Woodrow, because you know Miss Lazarus at Woodrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. I walk in the woodrow, they say my whole government. How did y'all think it's it is? But mind you, they only know me for me going there yeah. and me showing up. So for me, it's like, yeah, what I did when I was in high school, college, and, and when I was in the league, I think that's important, but more important that it provided me with a platform mm -hmm. and able to talk to these kids and deliver them a message, yeah. provide hope, inspire, and empower yeah. to kids that look like me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In the neighborhood where I came from, you know. So for me, it's like talk about New Brunswick, I want to talk about, for me now, the legacy that I'm trying to instill and help inspire these kids to do better. Yeah. I don't care about them making it to the league. Like, certain people that I care and I feel bad for that they didn't make it to the yeah. league. We talked about this before. Unfortunate situations, COVID, yeah, he got hurt. Like, it's a lot of BS that yeah. happens, but that's the thing. You never know what that's happens. A, that's a part of it. You, you got to be prepared. Stuff. For not being a professional football That's player, you got to be you prepared for life. Have a plan B you know what I'm saying? Always, or yeah. always have, not even a plan B. Like that, like even if, in your hands yeah, like say like box. we know like football and workout or whatever sports and workout for my little brother, or whatever. But he not gonna sit and pout about it. Like you get what I'm saying? Some people may just like oh, it's over. Like yeah. I don't got nothing else to do. Like and I, and it's and it's sad to say like it's some people like that in our area. Like like a sport and workout for them, and like some people are still 30, 40 years old can't find themselves or yeah. know what to do because something that happened 20 years ago yeah. when they was in high school you get what i'm saying like like you said to the kids earlier like some of the guys that are outside on the streets yeah. and all of that you went to high school yeah. and they was nice yeah like you yeah. could hear stories about some of these guys that are standing on these and he was quiet when i said that yeah they didn't want to believe when i said that he, he wasn't there but this is what i said earlier so we was talking to the middle school kids and it got a little real. Yeah, it got a little got a very real. real in there. Yeah, but I, that's how you got your veto. I told them because they all know Remsen Ave. I was like, I grew up on Remsen Ave. Or Remsen Hill. That was my street. Some of them, some of them kids' right. parents are out Not there. Not too far, right street. from, right, yeah. two blocks away from. No, the block over. Yeah, you were in Baldwin, right? Concert. Handy. Handy, Andy. You, was, so you, two, you could see two it. Two blocks yeah, over. Right, yeah. right in front of the liquor they store. They lived in the new. Damn, he was right across the street from the liquor store. Yeah, he was two blocks away from me. Him and his dad. Um, so. We had to walk to the bus stop, which was on Remsen, between Saddam and Town, and, and, and Town, right? Mm -hmm. So, I was telling them on my walk to school, I would see fiends all the time. Yeah, yeah, Crackheads, yeah, bro. You know, he lived yeah. on that shit, bro. He lived at the top of the yeah. top of the street. With a but like the street I used to hang out was on was Seaman. Mm -hmm. That's where Joe Mills lived. Joe, Joe, lived, Joe Mills lived on Seaman and um. What's the uh the the knock the next block up over Remsen? What my key? Lee? Lee. Lee, 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 yeah, Lee. So, Damn, you uh, was right there for real. Yeah, Damn, right there. Right Smack Lee. Lee the trenches. I'm telling y'all, bro. Like, oh, y'all yeah, y'all see, see me now. No, I know, I know, I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't you know you was right smacking right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, bro, straight up, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I was telling them like when I was younger, I didn't recognize none of them fiends. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't recognize none of them. They all were grown men. I said, but now I'm 35, I drive down Remsen Avenue, I recognize a lot of them fiends. A lot of them look real familiar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I went to high school with a lot of them. And I'm like, and they sat in these chairs just like I did. Make a choice, fam. Make a choice. And, and I didn't want to get so dark so quick, but man, they be talking and running their mouth and then they hear me say stuff like that. They be like, oh, snap. They're That's like, a, they ain't never think of it like that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, because like, when you used to say that to us too, like, yo, like, you might, your friends may, like, I'm not saying you necessarily, but people, like, around your age or whatever be like, yo, your friends may be like, these motherfuckers out here, like, that's an eye-opener, though, like, yeah. like, some some kids may not look at it like that, but that's really an eye-opener, like, and it hit you, you know why, it hit though, you because what I did, making it to the level that I did, is extremely difficult. Yeah. What, what we're talking about, going on the block, that's easy. Easy, easy, easy. easy. That's the easy way out. Yeah. That's the leap path to resistance. Easy. You don't got to worry about nothing. You don't got to worry about no kids. You don't got to worry about education. You don't got to worry about making money. You just got to worry about that next All you got to do is go outside and go yeah, get your worry about the next hit. That's, that's all you're doing. That's your you know what I'm saying? stuff for the rest of the day, too. Yeah, bro. So, you know, for me, it's like, 
you know, choose the hard path, choose the difficult path, because on the other side of that, I don't know where I stole this from, but on the other side of that is glory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I live a great life. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Bro, you saw me today, bro. I've been here since 9.30 a.m. in New Brunswick, talking to kids all day mm -hmm. long, got paid zero dollars. Spent my gas money, my, bought lunch for myself, did the kids, talked to four different schools, because I care, and that's what I'm about, bro. That's, that's my legacy that I'm trying to pass on to these kids, because for me, it ain't about, for him, he's a little short, so I was like, he may not make it to the league. The only thing I cared about, no, nah, he know how he's done him all the time. Yeah. Only thing I cared about was he was he be successful. Yeah, yeah and it, he gets it's not through always this. about just sports, like like you said. Because you, you go through what sports teaches you, adversity. it puts you through adversity, yeah, right? right? We talked about the situation earlier with the firefighters. It puts you through the fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when you come outside of that, it's beautiful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's glorious. And all of y'all right now, y'all still going through it. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm going through it because I'm transitioning, doing this, doing that, doing this with the Giants, doing this over here. I'm still learning. I'm still messing stuff up. You know what I'm saying? I'm still learning. I'm still trying to be, look a good dad. I got an 11-year-old daughter. I haven't talked to her in a couple weeks. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we text every now and again, but, you know, I'm still trying to learn how to be a good father. You know what I'm saying? Which I feel like I am, but, man, these kids, they be testing me, man. It's my daughter... <laughs> He tested me, man. I, <laughs> no grown man alive be tested me, but a little girl, yeah, they yeah. quick to test me, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you know you ain't going to do nothing. You do nothing. <laughs> she look at me like, you ain't going to do <laughs> shit, motherfucker. <laughs> but now, um, just to go back, because you were saying about like Coach Lies and Coach Quinn, like, you know, those are some important people that changed a lot of people's lives mm -hmm. in New Brunswick. You know, like a lot of people from New Brunswick may not know about them, but like talk about them, like how they were important in your life, oh, man, how they well, affect you Laz. in your yeah. life and all of that stuff. So Coach Laz, my freshman year, I think it was her second year in New Brunswick High School. She was running the Play Smart program, so she was the academic coach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was this big energy. Hey, how you doing? I'm Lori. Like, you know, like that. Like, yeah. not superficial, because that's her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's just how she Hard is. Time, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, but it's something different. You know what I mean? Like... We ain't used to that stuff, yeah, you know no. what I'm saying? We not First used of all, I ain't really seen too many white people in New Brunswick like back that then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? So so for her, you know, she was a different energy, yeah, but she controlled... black people in New Brunswick. Right, she controlled Play It Smart, right. right. <laughs> she controlled play, the Play It Smart program, which was a mandatory study hall yep. after practice. Yeah, for athletes. And yeah, for, uh, for, it was only football players. Oh, okay. It was when I was in high school, they just started the program like maybe two or three years before. So Play It Smart was almost right. brand new. It was just football players? I don't know if you remember, but, excuse me. I just burped. Let's see. If, there was a 25 year anniversary sweatshirt uh, that we had like, have, a like year the, or two ago. Like the football. football the graduate see, hats. so remember, I was in high school in 2001. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we going on, that's 20 years. Mm -hmm. you know? That's 22 years. Yeah, that's 20 something years. You know what I'm saying? So Play It Smart was just getting started. getting started, just getting going, and it was only football. And then they took it and expanded it to other sports. And I'll give you a story for Miss Lazarus real quick, talking about Dre, Andre Dixon. And Al. They both, and Al Dre Belong, two Division One players yeah. my senior year. Yeah. The end of their junior years, I was the only one eligible. To play, play football. I was actually eligible my sophomore year because I took the SATs. Oh, for college. For college. Oh. NCAA, NCAA clearinghouse yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, eligibility. So Al and Dre were not, they didn't pass the NCAA clearinghouse. They were not eligible to play college football. So they wasn't getting no scholarships or nothing. I had scholarships coming in, but we had guys, recruits coming in and scouts look, coming to look at us. Dre and Al, and I, I know Dre for a fact. Al, I'm, I think he did very well. I don't know if he did as good as Dre. Dre got straight A's his senior year, bro. Mm -hmm. He put his head down, got focused, got straight A's his senior year. He ain't dumb. Mm -hmm. And I ain't no smarter than him. Yeah. But what I did was I did my work. You put your head down. I put work. my head down and I work and I grind it. And I talk to a lot of kids now because some of these kids think they're cool, they think they're smart. But like, bro, if you failing out of elementary school, bro, you ain't that smart. You're not. You know, actually, you're not smart at all. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for me, I, I try to give that story about Dre because that's what it takes to get to what you want. Yeah. Because ain't nobody about to hand it to you. That's a fact. You got to go after it and get it. And we're talking about people that don't like school. Yeah. Because even Dre, Dre would tell us, like, like, I wasn't the best at school. Yeah. I didn't like school like people that. Think, people think 
that kids be dumb like nah they just don't like they school. don't like school no, no, but, but, there's but, some kids there's some kids it's some kids who don't got it some kids who don't got it but it's it's it, that's what life is about because first of all it ain't too many people right now in this world especially after covid that say i like school yeah right when i was I in high school, school I right, school. right. I like, school. when i was in high school bro i never I like school because I can hang with my friends. Yeah, yes, sir. You that's the reason saying? why I like school. Time, like, and, and I was in there with sports. my friends, my brother. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why I like school. But I hated school, like, really, bro. Like, I hated doing school work. I hated, like, doing that's assignments. Funny. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to study. Like, we used to tell kids, man, we not missing school today. School won't be fun. Nah, yeah, yeah. Like, when we was in high school, like, we about to be Like lit. I said, B was a, a freshman. He'd tell you. You ain't, Yo, you ain't want to miss school. Miss like, if you you might miss, like you said, you might miss. it was lit. It was lit. <laughs> like, it didn't even from the morning to the end of the day. Morning to the end. <laughs> there was no fights, no drama, nothing. It was just everybody coming to school, having a good time, and being students. Like, it wasn't no rowdiness going on. Like, guys was like. Our See, but like that, people, it, and, and I hope, you know, some younger kids are listening to this. Yeah, you can go and have fun in school. You that can be. Do what you got to do. Exactly. Yeah. That can be the reason why you wake up in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say, oh, I'm looking forward to having a good time, my guys today. Yeah. But know why you're there. Yeah. You, the reason for you to have a good time and the reason for you to wake up in the morning, but there's a reason why you're at school. And it's not to have a good time. Yeah. It's to get that damn education, mm -hmm. right? Get your degree, walk away. You don't have to do school ever again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're good. Especially nowadays, when we got these smartphones, you can access all type of curriculums you through you your phone. Do. You can, you can find get degrees everything. on your phone. Everything. You can get all type of information, courses, all that on your phone. Yeah. The only thing you got to do is put the work in. Put the work in. That's the and, only thing and, you got to do. And, and today's day is kind of a little bit harder than, I mean, easier than what it was for you guys. I didn't have like... Instagram, I didn't have It's easier Twitter. accessible, but it's not easier. Yeah, I it's mean, it's still the same yeah, type of difficulties. Y'all just have different ways More to technology. access it. We have a way to yes. access it. For us, I feel like it got harder because, you know, when we was doing COVID, we in class online for every single time. That's class. probably the only So time. look, bro, I'm taking a test, nigga. I go get them answers. But as soon as they stop that, you got to try to start. Oh, you were saying it was harder to learn. No. Now, Martin, now, now, it's now, it's now, it's now, because they dealt with the COVID year with everybody Where, like this. Everything was bullshit. Everything was bullshit, and now they're trying to like standardize to where I was in 2019. And I'm like, bro, I didn't take my first in-person test until my sophomore year of college. Yeah, I'm like, wild. I forgot how to take a, how to that's study, wild. how to take a test. Damn. Now, COVID definitely did kill a lot of noise. Like, like, like even like the kids now, like. They were rowdy because they had to sit in the fucking house yeah. for, for almost a year and some change, almost damn near two years. Bro, I've been that's talking. Why I'm ta that's why when I talk to you about the the, the, the incident and shit, like 13-year-old kids, 14-year-old kids, shit like that, like, that's because them motherfuckers had time to sit in the house for two years and do nothing. Literally, like, that's all the energy they're releasing right now. You know what it is, though? They start manifesting their thoughts yep. with no filter. Mm -hmm. No filter. That's no dangerous no because you you're looking at you know stuff on TV and like you know uh, fighting on the internet, Grand Theft Auto, yeah. Call of Duty, you yep. shooting games. Yep. There's no filter. NBA there's no, young boy. There's no yeah. You got no, NBA players like, acting crazy. You <laughs> <laughs> got yeah. NBA niggas acting crazy. But like, there's no filter. Like there there there's only kind of like the negative and. Like the news, right? Yeah. You turn on the news right now. I hate the news. You turn on the news night, right now. It's gonna nah, be like, it's not bad. yo, it's gonna be like, man uh, kills a guy in New York. Woman throws her baby in the trash. You're like, yo, what? What? Yeah, like, what? Like, there's billions of people in the world. Those incidences happen a little more than we want them to happen. Yeah. But there's a lot of good in the world too. But the news they ain't showing you that. That's just not on your Instagram. The the uh, stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that unfiltered. To a 11, 12, 13 year old, that could be so traumatic. And I've been seeing it because I've been going to these schools and I've been listening to these kids and listening to the administrators, principals, or whatever. The look on their eyes when they say, Man, it's hard since COVID. No, they, it's, it's, it's almost a look of defeat. Yeah, it's the, like the teachers now or like administrators or whatever, it's hard for them to have control. Yep. 
Because these kids are testing fucking adults. Absolutely. Testing. Absolutely. Like, putting testing adults, like on putting hands adults. on adults. Like, right. Because they know that the, that adult has power and they can't do shit to me. You know what I'm saying? And then all the thing I do is have a kid in the back, record it. Their job is over. Yep. That's it. And the, 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 the thing is, the principal, teacher, administrator, who is, they can follow protocol in the book, but can still get fired because of social media mm -hmm. and what everybody got to say about what happened. Uh, if they'll fire you, like, now that's not a good look, you know, all that stuff. Right. Like, how you feel about that incident at high school with the Chinese lady? That's wild. That shit was crazy. Like 29, 26, she was too damn old to be in high school. <laughs> too damn old. But, like, they, I mean, I know they're reevaluating how they're checking mm -hmm. uh, um, documents and stuff like that. But that's dangerous because what if it was a dude? Like, like what if they came there and actually, what if it was like, a man? It probably a grown ass different. man. The and story would have been way differently because that they would have probably made it seem, oh, it's not safe for the Like he's a predator type yeah, stuff, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what the woman's motives were, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, really, who wants to be a child to go to school? I don't know. Again? <laughs> right? Like, you didn't learn know, enough? Man. You didn't learn enough? I don't then know you know what high school, you out of college. I think, it's, I think it's a little wild, but I've seen wilder stuff than that, you know? Not like, a big deal. Going through like talking to like all of these kids at different schools and all of that, how does that how does that help you or affect you? Like, or what do you get from those kids that can help you be a better father? Oh, good question. Um, first like, you of all, you said like like you like earlier you said that like any in any professional athlete, if you have a child, I know the relationship with your child is not going to be it's not it's not great the best because your child is going to want to physically see you, physically want you to touch them and stuff like that. But also, dad has a job mm -hmm. for you to eat. For you to wear clothes, for yep. you to get what you want, you know what I'm saying? Well, it's it's a uh, it's a it's a village, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes there's only two, which is the co-parenting situation, or parent, husband, wife, whatever the situation may be. You know, I don't think it's fair to think one person is going to raise a kid. Yeah, you know what I mean. So for me, I talk to these schools and I talk to these kids, listening and hearing from them, and then also listening to the teachers as well, because a lot of them are parents. A lot of them have been through what I'm going through right now. Yeah. So I just like different perspective. And I love to hear stories. Like, she went, oh, my daughter did this, and da 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 I'm like, so what'd you do? You know what I mean? Did you do anything? And blah, blah, blah. Ms. Lazarus just hit me with some great words, and I'm telling all of y'all this right now, be you too. Especially if y'all got kids, and women in general. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Strike when the iron is cold. Mm. What that mean? That mean let her relax. Let oh, him chill okay, out. Okay. Cause men, we're more logical. Yeah. Yes. We, we we think less right. feeling, cause feelings use somebody getting hurt. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, something happened, us making a foolish decision. Right. We're more logical. Right. Women are based a lot of off, their, everything is off the emotions. Everything is off emotions. So you say, what do you think about this? Well, I just feel. I asked you, what do you think about this? I just feel allowed respect their feelings, yeah. acknowledge their feelings, allow it to kind of de-escalate a little bit. When the iron is cold, going with logic, acknowledging feelings, but let them go down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to argue with somebody that doesn't want to hear logic, that can't hear logic, and they're so based on their feelings and emotions. This is my daughter I'm talking yep. about. This is a child. Sometimes it doesn't change when they get older. Yeah. I'm talking about women. You know what I mean? So that's my little advice to my guys right now. You know, I know being a parent and being a professional athlete is like hard because what parent you know that doesn't want to be in their child is like yeah, yeah, yeah. be hands on and do all of that type of stuff. So like a lot of players can kind of relate to mm -hmm. what you're going through, whatever, or and former players, whatever the case may be. Because now that you're retired, you could. You could do. You could be the yeah. dad that you want to be. Yeah. You know, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It so, could be. It could be. It, could not, be. it wasn't too late for me, but it could be. You know, and it is hard. But I, like I, I, this message was was going across. You know, to every school that I was talking to today. Life is hard. Yeah. But Everything you gotta, in life is adversity. But you gotta go through it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go through it because there's there's so much. There's so much that's going to test you. There's so much that's going to make you stronger. But that process, understanding how to go through that, how to be resilient, how to be tough, 
how to respond to adversity, that's gonna make you who you are. That's gonna make you get to that point that you really wanna get to. Yeah. You can't skip that. You can't put no cheat code in and get to that million dollars. You're right. You can't put that cheat code and get to that doctor. You can't do it. Yeah, you're right. You can't do it. You gotta go through the fire and the trials and the tribulations of life. And that's what it's all about. So for me, I just embrace it. You know, I embrace the, the struggles with an open mind, you know, trying to be thoughtful, creative about how I approach fatherhood and, uh, and business too. Anything that I'm doing, I'm trying to be creative, trying to be focused, trying to stay after it and just learn from the mistakes that I'm making yeah. because I'm still human, bro. You are. Yeah. Everybody makes mistakes. Nobody is perfect in, in, in this world. You know, but talking about adversity, you know, like, like you was talking about your college career a little bit. You didn't start your freshman year. You went undrafted. You know, like talk about all of that, like facing through, facing adversity, playing college football, then transition into the NFL. Because you, like, you played on a couple of teams in the NFL. Yeah. You probably been through the things that some some NFL players go through. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like with management, organizations, and all that stuff. Like, how does that? How does that? How did that make you like? How did that make you? Did it make you like? You know, so, obviously it didn't break you. Yeah, how did yeah. It make you. So I, I call draft day the the funnest, hardest most painful, joyful, happiest, saddest day of my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Started out being, I was a projected second to fourth round, round draft pick. Yeah. That mean the least I'm getting is like $500,000. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm ready, you know what I mean? That's more money than what you had before. Boy, I had no money, bro. I was broke. <laughs> I was in debt at that point because I done borrowed money. I was probably $5,000 in debt. Yeah. Because I had to borrow money for training, da, 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 yeah. do this, do that. Um, you know, so I was in debt, you know, I had no money when I was in college, I was broke. Um, you know, and then the draft happens, I don't get my first phone call to the fifth round. Mm. And I'm doubting myself, I'm doubting every, all the work that I've done, you know what I'm saying? Ion, you probably felt this feeling too, about everything that you've done and committed yourself to for the sport. Uh -huh. You feel like they kind of taking it from you. Yeah. You know, the situations, the logistics of the situation or whatever the, the case may be. And I felt like, maybe I can't play in the NFL. Yeah. I only felt like that for like 20 seconds, but it was a real feeling. And I'm very positive, I'm very motivated. That was the only time I really felt and, and kind of questioned. If you could play. Not just that, but all of this work that I've done, all these bruises oh and these God, surgeries dang. I've had, you know what I'm saying? All the stuff I've been All putting out. Nothing. For nothing? Yeah, yeah. Just not get drafted, not to selected, and I'm not good enough. So I questioned myself. It was for a brief moment. Um, I went upstairs in my room. I cried for a little bit. My mom's came upstairs. Man. And some people don't have thoughtful mothers. Yeah. Some people have the aggressive, hard on you mothers, right? But, and I, I, I say this to everybody. It, don't be, it might not be your mom, it might be your dad, your brother, your uncle. A teacher at school, yep. whoever. There are people that tell you what you need to hear and when you. you need to hear. Yep. That is so crucial. And my mom is that, you know? So she came upstairs. Man, it's just something as simple as this. She said, It's okay, baby. Somebody gonna give you a shot. And that's all you ever need. That's all I need to hear. Because I was like, she right. I just don't know when it's gonna be. Yeah. You know, I thought it was gonna be early, but all I ever wanted was, was to get start? into the NFL. I didn't want to get drafted in the first round, second round. That wasn't one of my goals. My goals was to make it to the NFL. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm not gonna get the money up front. You know, okay, whatever the case may be. Went back downstairs, enjoyed the rest of the party, ended up going undrafted, which sucked. I'm mad now, looking <laughs> hot. And then afterwards, I was able to pick the New Orleans Saints, and we did a toast. Wait, hold up. When that, how does that work? When you go on draft, you pick the you pick. Well, it, it depends. You know, like how many other teams besides the Saints? Were? I had two teams. I had three teams, but then it narrowed down to two. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you that. So you know, everybody knows you get drafted. You can't pick unless you're freaking Eli Manning. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to fucking go to Chargers. I want to go to New York. <laughs> I ain't fucking Eli Manning, right? Or John Elway. Or John. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> John Elway or Eli. Um, you know, so after the draft, I had three suitors. Two teams that were like that offered me a signing bonus, like yo, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offered me 30k mm -hmm. and to sign, and then the New Orleans only offered me 7,500 dollars. Mm -hmm. But for me, it wasn't about that 30,000 dollars. Remember, I wanted to make a team. I didn't want to make 30,000. That wasn't my goal. Even though that money, I needed that shit. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Get my ass out of debt. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> 
I chose New Orleans because I looked at the opportunity. I looked on both rosters, I looked at the coaching staff, who was there, where my potential could be, and I picked the Saints for the opportunity, not for the money up front, but for the long game. Yeah. And I ended up playing four years there, winning the Super Bowl there, being a starter there for several years, you know, and, and, and the rest is history. Shit, you even was part of the onside kick too when, when, I, won, when I won the Super Bowl. Yeah, man, and that was crazy. That whole deal. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't like the Saints for a while. Why not? Because y'all beat my team. Who your team? The Colts. Indy? Yeah. Indy, you still, still your squad? Yeah. <laughs> so you like, uh, what's the quarterback name? Anthony Richardson. He gonna be good? All I'm gonna say is... <laughs>